Look at that. That was, I feel like that was right after a mustachioed Chris Carter. Like you had gotten rid of the stash. Warren Sapp had picked it up for you. I got no clue. Big Sapp daddy. <laughs> Big Daniel. Oh, that's Randall McDaniel between the two of you guys? I didn't even recognize that. Oh, yeah. Man, look at that. He's got a six-pack as, as a left guard. <laughs> you know who didn't have a six-pack? Warren, Warren Sapp. Sapp. Warren, no, Warren Sapp, Sapp did not that have belly. a six -pack. No, you don't need a six-pack, but he's great, though. <laughs> you don't need no six-pack doing what he's doing. He's belly, bump. he's belly bumping. I, I, Willie Rope had the roughest weekend, his two teams. Ooh. Saints and Chiefs. Thanks for so. getting him in the Super Bowl. Gets neither. Time for your AT&T wake-up call. We start with Antonio Brown, who continues to make headlines. Earlier this week, Steelers captain Marquise Pouncey said the team would welcome back A.B. However, yesterday A.B. tweeted that he is open for business. All right, C.C., assuming that he is, which team would benefit most from A.B.? Man, I don't know. He's a good wide receiver. There's a couple teams out there that need one. People talked about San Francisco. I think he should go to Jacksonville with Tom Coughlin. Wait. Just some good old-fashioned, just, hey, no a hats on. Both your feet on the floor, no hoodies, all that, no fur coats, all that. That's where I think he should go. Tom Coughlin, call Pittsburgh. We got one of the best diva receivers for you. This is a version of your kid misbehaved all school year, so you send him to the grandparents' ranch for the summer. I'm going to teach you some work. Send yep. you to Grandpa Coughlin. I think San oh, Francisco. Yeah. That's one of those rich people problems. <laughs> hey, kids, you're going away from camp in the summer. You got six weeks going nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, I know about that. I got friends sitting that do that to their kids all the time. See, I think Send them away for the I think San Francisco does make the most sense. And I think A B, if it matters, would be the happiest there. I know that's not I, your concern. Yeah, what do I care about? <laughs> he, he should be happy in Pittsburgh. Yesterday it was reported that Cam Newton had an arthroscopic procedure done on his right shoulder. This is the second shoulder surgery in three years now for Cam Newton. He had surgery to fix a partially torn rotator cuff in March of 2017. Nick, what did you make of the news? Listen, it confirms what we all knew watching Cam Newton play and reading the reports after the season. He was, shortly after they got off that great start, he had, was playing with a hurt shoulder. Then T.J. Watt really exacerbated the problem. Mm -hmm. I'm glad they're dealing with it early. I think that you don't have to be too concerned yet. But to me, you know how I feel about these things. He's one shoulder injury away from it being a significant concern for his career moving forward. You just hope Cam can get back to full strength because we know how good he can be when he is. Yeah, I'm glad they were able to go in there compared to just trying to rehab it. That's something Andrew Luck tried to do a number of times. It didn't work. Then they eventually went in there and surgically repaired it. Happy for Cam. He's one of the best in the game. The game is better when he's playing at a high level. All right, moving on to the NBA, where yesterday the starters for the All Star game were announced. In the West, it'll be LeBron, KD, Paul George, Harden, and Steph. In the East, it's Giannis, Kawhi, Embiid, Kyrie, and Kemba. Nick, what do you think? Did the fans get the starters right? Nine of the ten. I'm very happy for Kimball Walker, by the way. He's getting some just-deserved uh, credit and notoriety even playing in Charlotte. The only one that I take issue with is I would have said Anthony Davis over Kevin Durant. You could argue Anthony Davis over LeBron because LeBron's missed time, but you knew LeBron was going to get more votes than anybody. Like, I think Anthony Davis had a better year than Kevin Durant, but for, in large part, these are these are nine of the ten I would have picked given the two conference makeups. Uh, the Pelicans, what's the record right now? They're, they're struggling. Okay, are they in the playoff? They're not, but it's not the MVP. It's the all-star race. Oh, it's I'm just trying to... No, no, I didn't ask you to explain okay. that. Okay. I just, okay, because fans have said you have to have two starters off the best team in the NBA. Now they've won nine in a row. It's right. KD should be a starter. So... It's a good problem to have in the West. You don't, you don't have a center. When you don't have a center, AD's going to miss out. All right, moving on. Last week, we learned that Kyrie Irving reached out to his former teammate LeBron James. Among topics discussed, how hard it is to lead a team. He also apologized for not listening to LeBron when he was a younger player. Now Kevin Love is suggesting that Kyrie could potentially reunite with LeBron in L.A. Nick, could Kyrie actually team up again with LeBron James this summer? I do not think people should dismiss this as a possibility. I would have dismissed it as a possibility three weeks ago. But that phone call was an important phone call, and there were elements of that phone call that have not been publicly reported and will not be public, publicly reported. But it was, it was a legitimate reconciliation, and there was... I've been led to believe there was a little bit of a 
man, remember when going on there. Little nostalgia about because LeBron's in a spot right now where you know what type of player he could desperately use? A Kyrie. A guy like Kyrie Irving. And you know what Kyrie's learning a in LeBron. Boston? Yeah, having another veteran, having a guy that can really take on the full leadership mantle, which maybe Kyrie isn't quite cut out for, at least at this moment, the way he thought. And so we talk about the pending free agents this offseason, and we've just never included Kyrie as one of the Laker targets because of the way he and LeBron ended. I don't think people should dismiss this idea. I don't think right now it's the likely outcome, but it is not an impossible outcome. And I can tell you it's not one LeBron would stand in the way of. It's not one where LeBron would say, man, he left before, there was the, there was the odd interview after he left. That would not happen. And the, the Lakers, as we are seeing right now, have needs everywhere. Like, it's not like you can say, oh, well, he doesn't fit because we have Lonzo. It makes That's, sense. It, it, it absolutely makes sense for the worst free throw shooting team in the league, one of the worst three point shooting teams in the league, a team that really is struggling to score, to add one of the best and most unique scorers in the league. I think LeBron ultimately realizes, too, regardless of what KD decides to do this offseason, he's going to have to be able to beat the Warriors. And in beating the Warriors, LeBron has a comfort level with only a certain number of players. Kyrie being one of those very few players. Now, there's players that he would like to take to court with, guys who aren't in Los Angeles, Kawhi and some other potential free agents. But what if they don't get them? I mean, what's, what is the Lakers' plan B if Kawhi decides to go to the Clippers or d do something else? Mm -hmm. What if they can't trade for AD? AD's already said, I'm not going to demand a trade. So that right there makes it problematic for the Lakers right there that he's not demanding a trade early. So that's going to take it to the summer. There's going to be other people trying to trade for AD. Boston's got more assets, draft picks, and our players that I think would 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 if I'm if I'm the Pelicans that I would look to instead of looking to trade with the Lakers. So I think Magic Johnson and LeBron they need more than one plan, and I do believe that Kyrie could be a part of those plans. And how good would the Lakers be if these two team back well, up again? Because it seems like they've I don't want to say given up on their own players, but they have definitely not met uh, played up to expectations. Well, listen, we we know how good a team can be with LeBron and Kyrie. They can win the championship. They can beat a 73-win Warrior team. They can be, when those two guys are both playing at peak capacity. Do you think they can beat the Warriors? Well, again, I don't know that anyone can beat this, this iteration of the Warriors. But to C's point, even if Kevin Durant leaves, the Warriors will still probably be the favorites out West. And so, yes, like the, the ability for them to add, they have to add another superstar for LeBron's year 17. Mm -hmm. the, the guys that are free agents, here's the list of it's Clay. No one thinks he's leaving, and I, I, it would be crazy. It would be wild to me if he left there to go to the Lakers. Durant. A lot of people think he's leaving, but not to go to the Lakers. Kawhi Leonard, who could is is going. I believe still going to Los Angeles, but there's two teams there, and Kyrie. That's the entire list. So if we're crossing off Clay, if we're crossing off KD, I think. Kawhi will be their top target, but you can you can pursue both at the same time. I just I think people will hear this and dismiss it. I'm telling you right now, you should not dismiss this as a possibility. All right, let's move on to the Dallas Cowboys still in the news. That'll happen when your owner is still seemingly on the fence about your head coach. Jason Garrett has yet to receive an extension or a true endorsement from Jerry Jones. Now reports are circulating that the Cowboys might replace Jason Garrett with Saints head coach Sean Payton. Keep in mind, next season will be Garrett's last year of his deal. Chris, would the Cowboys, Cowboys be better off with Sean Payton than what you've seen with Jason Garrett? Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't know if Sean Payton can get it. One of the variables is how they get along with Jerry. Jerry's son, Stevens, is right-hand guy. So if someone can answer that, like I would be like, I don't like to do this type of speculation. All right, trying to put one guy who's doing a great job and... Where do we get the indication Sean Payton's going to be available? Like, why would the Saints, Gail Benson, wife of, of the late Tom Benson, she's been running that team for a little more than a year. You think she's going to allow the, the, the best coach in franchise history just to walk out the door? Like, I don't think that's going to happen. And, <coughs> excuse me, I don't think there's a person that knows if Sean Payton is a better fit with the Cowboys. There's a lot of distraction that go with the Cowboys. I think Sean Payton has done a marvelous job there. 
in New Orleans. I think that him, Mickey Loomis, the general manager, Jeff Ireland, what they do from a front office standpoint as far as drafting players with, 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 with Sean Payton in mind as far as coaching them, playing in that culture, I think Sean's done a great job. I don't think he's going to be available. So to think Everyone thinks they could do a better job than Jason Garrett because people don't respect him as a coach. I start with, I respect Jason Garrett as a coach. I know that's the toughest job in sports to be the coach of the Dallas Cowboys. So my answer would be no initially because I, be, I got a lot of respect for Jason Garrett and what he's doing. I think you can have respect for what Jason Garrett's doing and still believe Sean Payton, if he were a coaching free agent, which he's not, and more on that in a moment, would be an upgrade. Like, I, I think Sean Payton is one of the very best coaches in the entire NFL. I think you could make the argument that the four best coaches in the league were the final four coaches left. that we had left in the playoffs this year to go along with the four best offenses, certainly four of the top five or six. And as far as his relationship ability to get along, we don't know how he would fit in the role of head coach of the Cowboys, but he was in Dallas before he went to New Orleans. He was the assistant head coach, the quarterback's coach there. So there is a relationship with Jerry Jones, at that point in time, Stephen Jones didn't have the role he has now, and Stephen Jones is more in charge of the day-to-day. -day. But this is, this is a weird instance because th there just seems to be all of a sudden a lot of smoke surrounding this when contractually there would be no fire. Sean Payton is going into year four, so he has two years left, of a five-year, $45 million contract with the Saints. So what would have so, to happen for him to be able to leave? He'd have to request. Well, they would, they would have to the two organizations would have to come up with some type of uh, agreement, either it be draft pick compensation or cash, com cash compensation or a collection of both, and Sean Payton would have to be down for it. I, there are a lot of reasons why on its face, I believe, well, of course the Cowboys would want to get Sean Payton. Almost every team in the league would want to get Sean Payton. But for the same reasons you feel like the Saints would be hesitant to move on from Sean Payton, especially when the team, much like when we talked about Drew Brees yesterday, and about his retirement window versus Brady's, why would Breeze want to walk away now when they finally have the defense they're together? They're that close. Why, why would Sean Payton want to change things now when he, I know, feels if they get that call right, we're going to the Super Bowl and we're the favorites in the Super Bowl. We're the best team in the league. But people close to the situation seem to think this is a real possibility. And it's been odd to me the way Jerry Jones has been. He's always been a backer of Jason Garrett. They just came off one of their best years. They won a playoff game, and he is yet to publicly commit to him. That part to me is, there, there has to be a reason there. So if we're gonna compare the two coaches, let's look at year by year. How many losing seasons has Sean Payton had? Well, he had three in a row, three, and he had, I think, one before that. So oh, okay, I'll get back to that. Season. How many has Jason Garrett had? One losing season. Oh, okay, so I'm just gonna tell you, if Sean Payton was the coach in Dallas, he would have already been fired because he's already done something that Jason Garrett wouldn't do. He wouldn't have them three losing seasons. You think he would have survived those three losing seasons in Dallas with Jerry Jones as the owner? No, but do you think he necessarily would have had losing seasons with the full team they had in Dallas? You understand what I'm saying? I mean, saying? where are they getting the players from? They're drafting from the same pool. They're putting the team out there. Yeah, Drew Brees had losing seasons. Yep. Dallas, do you think Dallas is going to have a losing season when they had a, a one of the marquee franchises? Like, so I, I just think that Sean Payton has done a good job in New Orleans. It hadn't been a job where he's been like, you know something, I'll take him over any coach in the league. He has had his own struggles. And if he had them same struggles in Dallas, that would have cost him his job. So how we look at Jason Garrett is totally different how we looked at Sean Payton. I, I agree that Jason Garrett, when you look at his coaching resume, if you take his name out of it and you look at the win-loss record, there are a lot of things where you'd say this guy is uh, he, the the public view of him is very different than what his win-loss record should say. The fact that they only bottomed out the one season when Romo got hurt and they didn't have a backup, that they have been at least eight and eight seem, or better seemingly every year. But the other reason why, if he were available, it would be very attractive to me is the Cowboys over the next four or five years are going to be determined in large part by how good can Dak be?
because he's not going to be making $800,000 anymore. He's going to be getting a long-term extension, we all think, this offseason. And I don't know that there's a coach, there, there's not three coaches in the league, certainly, that I trust more to help Dak reach his full potential than Sean Payton. And if we think part of the problem with Dallas is the meddling of Jerry Jones. Big part of the problem. Okay, so Sean Payton would only, I would imagine, agree to come of to the course. team. If, if there was an understanding in place that he would have much more of an open pathway and much, much more say control. and veto power. Similar sure. to what Parcells had when he was there. Now, he wasn't there a long time for Parcells. I would say, I would argue the Parcells time did work while he was there. They got they had a good, really good one really good season. There was the Romo fumbled snap that prevented him from winning that playoff game and moving on. Yeah, like, but that's why you get a divorce. They've been like, oh, how long were you married? 25 years. Well, it was working while I was there. Yeah, you end up getting divorced because it didn't work. That's why Bill Parcells left. Do, do I know Bill Parcells. He's a very, very good friend of mine. And there's a number of things about Dallas that are not attractive. Sean Payton is Bill Parcells' number one guy. Right. That's his, that's like his son. I don't see Sean Payton. I don't see Bill Parcells giving Sean the advice. You should leave New Orleans. You should leave the Benson family and go partner with Jerry and Steven. See, I just don't see it happening. It's not the first time Sean Payton's been rumored to be going somewhere else, but I think people have forgotten Jason Garrett, one losing season. Sean Payton, three in a row with Drew Brees. Well, what if Jason Garrett had Drew Brees? Yeah. Hmm, I think the conversation would be a little bit different. All right, we got to take a break. Coming up, hey, how can the Rams defense slow down Tom Brady and the Patriots? That's next on First Things First. I'd rather rule in hell. Serve in heaven. There are watches all over the